Simon Peter, Petros, the rock on which Christ will build the church. Highly passionate and energetic and more often going simply by the name of Peter, he will jump into seas in a vulnerable state when Christ walks on those same bodies of water to demonstrate divine presence. He will chair founding church meetings as the bishop of the church, confront Roman councils and bear witness to Christ's physical presence during his lifetime and Roman history. He will challenge you with his expressions of teachings of Christ and his experience of inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He will equally challenge you with his intense emotion at times, like suggesting to represent Christ's presence on a mountain by building three buildings to house him and two prophets of Israel. Be prepared to respond to Peter's method of ministry with openness and grace. He is an expression of God's love in a challenging and loving world. Maybe that could be Simon Peter's social media profile if, we, if there was a social media time back in his day. But his presence and the, tra the transfiguration was a reminder to us of how we are, ought to, how we perhaps ought not to behave at the, at the moment of Jesus' transfiguration. But he reminds us, as Christ reminds us to be, a people who are shining bright in this world to love and serve one another, and who see the light of each other together as God's people, and as people on, who inhabit this, this place on earth together. There are, there are moments when we encounter each other at different times, when we are challenged to see one another as Christ sees us, as people who are shining bright with kindness and compassion and hope and newness for the world. I'm a music lover. So last Sunday night, I was quite, uh, quite enthralled by the Grammy Awards on television. And I remember uh, a number of performances, but one of the ones that stood out for me was where, uh, where, where Tracy Chapman got to sing Fast Car for the first time on, on the stage in years. Now I first heard Luke Combs' country, country version of Fast Car in the midst of scrolling my Facebook feed not too long ago this year, which picked it up from my YouTube feed. It took me back to 1988, and I was in the final months of grade eight when Chapman released that song. Going back to those charts on, on the billboard in 1988, Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror was number one. Billy Ocean, Richard Marks, and one of my heartthrobs, Debbie Gibson, also had songs on the chart that week. But Fast Car was different. It sounded different, it caught my attention different, and it stuck with me. It sounded different than anything else on the radio then. Chapman's voice was deep. It wasn't soprano. And the genre and the tone were more rhythm and blues than pop. But it got my attention and became my new earworm. Fast forward 35 years and country star, not as big a country star as, say, Taylor Swift is, Luke Combs tells his story of loving Chapman's song since childhood, and he decides to record it himself. I YouTube that version, listened to it, loved it, and found subsequent links to the Country Music Awards, where Coombs won Single of the Year, an award that goes to the performance of that song. I thought, wait a minute, is this right? That's Tracy Chapman's song. Well, once Coombs got on stage at the Country Music Awards to accept his prize, he immediately thanked Tracy Chapman for writing the greatest song of all time. Then Fast Car got nominated for the Country Music Award for Song of the Year, an award that can only legally go to the songwriter. And sure enough, it won too at that same award ceremony. And Tracy Chapman became the first African-American artist to win a Country Music Song of the Year Award. The presenter said that she wasn't available that night, but they read a message from her thanking the Academy and the fans for honoring her song after 35 years. And I wonder to myself, now there's something not right here. Would it be possible, I wonder, to get both Coombs and Chapman on the stage together? 
I thought to myself, I suppose not without a whole lot of legal wrangling, not without the Grammys getting all the parties together, like Chapman's people talking to Combs's people, then both legal teams talking to one another, then both songwriting teams talking to one another, and the producers. Same old story. Maybe a six-digit figure would be attached to that one single performance. Well, then one week ago, last Sunday night on the Grammy Awards, early in the ceremony, just after the very first award was presented, we heard those first four quarter notes and two half notes strummed out on a guitar, and immediately my ears perked. Da 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 da, da da, da 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 da, da da. And I see a number of heads nodding, you know what I'm talking about. That moment on the Grammys. A strummer's hand on a guitar is on the screen, and the audience cheers. Then Tracy Chapman's face appears before she starts to sing, and the audience roars. A smile broadens her face as she catches a glimpse of herself on the monitor. It's her first live performance since, since 2015. And i got to stop myself and think, is this actually happening? They're actually making this work. She's performing this because Luke, Luke Combs performed it earlier this year, and it's become a big thing, and she needs to come back and, and recognize it as her own. And then Coombs enters the camera angle on the second stanza, and I think, oh my gosh, they're actually doing this to this wonderful song. I love times like these, where great songs in history are remembered, honored, respected, and recorded all over again. I think that whenever we can bring our resources and talents together to inspire all, we share a shining human journey together. Whenever our faces can smile widely and beam brightly, whenever our hearts can soar as our stomachs lighten softly, we share the journey that Christ made when his physical presence was transfigured into a divine reality. Christ was the presence of God on this earth during the days of Roman imperial rule. And because of the time he lived, he suffered horrible punishment at the hands of the empire's cruelty. That was, that was designed to suppress all opposition to its abuse of power. Christ's transfiguration demonstrated that, God's, that the presence of God's divine reality was also in Christ's human presence. And God's presence lives in this human world because of Christ. That 1980s Clorox bleach television advertisement, do you remember that? Where everyone's white clothing dazzled in the sunlight? Could be what the transfiguration looked like. It might be a, bright, a brief human representation of what the transfiguration may have been. But my friends, the transformation of you and I, of humanity that concentrates efforts, time, and talents for the good of one another, does reflect the presence of Christ in this world. The church that opens its doors to all, respects all who enter, and celebrates inclusive community, is the church that recognizes its call to be, to be a people who love one another. In the past two weeks, you know I've been away. I have traveled to Texas to board a cruise ship for the first time in my life and walked highly touristed streets of Roratan, Honduras, Cozumel and Costa Maya, Mexico, and the sandy beach of Harvest Kaya, Belize. I embraced the gentle arms of a sloth, had a monkey rest on my head, and was in the presence of colorful butterflies and exotic birds. I have pictures of all this. I'll show it to you some Sunday. <laughs> On board the ship, there were many people, and I was content just to sit in the observation lounge, as an introvert would do, or fall asleep on the deck chair, as I did, or lay on, on, a state, on our stateroom balcony and smell the salt sea air. I wondered how valuable it was to eat three full course meals a day and actually gain weight. And I did. I haven't stepped on a scale, but I know it. My waistlines are tighter. How meaningful was it to laugh loudly at a comedy show while those around me stared at my roars? 
laugh so loud was, I made a scene. How appropriate it was to sing loudly the tunes of the 80s and 90s at a concert in the Prima Theater on board the ship. I was kind of in awe of the luxury of it all. Once or, twi once or twice I voiced my United Church informed struggle and my Simon Peter like passion. But all that, but that was all that would be tolerated. I was silenced rather quickly. Grant, would you stop thinking so much about the possible social injustice of your situation and recognize the gift that has been given to you? You've been given this time as a holiday. This is your vacation. This is self-care. Those are my, those are couple, those are that, those couple of words are one of my mottos. In ministry, it's very important to have self-care, and I've been saying it ever since I started ministry, ever since I started studying ministry 24, five years ago. So when Brian, my best friend, said it out loud, he stopped me with his words. A worker in a field of social justice himself, he kept reminding me to relax and know that all was okay, that I was okay to be here for a short time. He said, Grant, this is your self-care. Stop it. Well, I stopped complaining or worrying after that. I wouldn't dare complain or worry after that. Time to enjoy the cruise. And my awareness of the wonder of the places began to change. And more than one conversation that I overheard in one of the food courts helped reshape my view. I'm from, I'm from Malaysia, I heard one passenger say. I'm from the Philippines, replied another crew member. I loved working these ships. I've been working cruises for years. In fact, here on the Prima, did you know that 70% of the crew here are Filipino? And as privileged as I have felt being able to take in this Caribbean journey, I found myself leaving the cruise enlightened, relaxed, more open to learn, more open to joy, and refresh and be refreshed and nourished by the great amount of care I received as a passenger in that place. Transfiguration is the event of Jesus presenting as both fully human and fully divine. And the event of our creator being well pleased with his presence on this earth to demonstrate eternal and everlasting love. It is not human transformation. Transfiguration belongs to Christ and Christ alone. But we are transformed by how we learn from Christ, how we learn to be light for one another, and how we love and care for each other in this world. And as the body of Christ in this church and in the world, we continue to hear our Creator's call that we keep on doing just that, loving one another. American Benedictine theologian and author Joan Chittiser, in her work, Illuminated Life, offers us these words that I'd like to leave us with this morning. She says, what needs to be changed in us? Anything that deludes us into thinking that we are not simply a work in progress, all of whose degrees, status, achievements, and power are no substitute for the wisdom that a world full of God everywhere in everyone has to teach us. In our life of faith, may we not get may we we may not get to be Christ or look like the dazzling light of Christ, inasmuch as we are on a journey to learn from Christ, striving to be like Christ. And as such, we may not get to be transfigured like Christ was in this life. But we continue to be transformed, renewed, as we live this shining human journey as the body of Christ together. We continue to learn from the presence of God and all that is embodied in us who we meet in this life. And as such, we keep on learning to more deeply love one another. So may God, our Creator, keep making us. May Christ continue to light our way with His teachings. And may the Holy Spirit continue to inspire us this day and always. Thanks be to God.